Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to video 21 on PHP programming. Uh, today we'll be looking at the for each statement and shuffling cards. And what I want to say about for each is it really is not related to the for statement. It's a little bit of a different uh, animal, and it's very useful and used quite a bit in PHP. So the first thing I want to do as a demonstration is go ahead and create an array of ages. So you could have an age 4, 8, 15, 16, 32, and 42, for example. And uh, Array for each arrays are great for transversing arrays, and that's specifically how they're set up just for arrays. You can only use arrays in them. In this case, I have my ages array, and I'm going to transverse over those uh, values using age. Now, I could put anything in here. The second, uh, the first value is set. That's the name of your array, but the second one can be any variable. You can just choose that name, and then it's used uh, basically as a temp variable loop uh, for each element. So uh, let's go ahead and run this and see if we print out all the ages. And indeed, you do 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42. Uh, so that's pretty good. It runs pretty well. And I had a little comma here that concatenated on, so I separated the ages. Uh, let's uh, put another variable in there. Let's just call this variable here um, um, banana. And now uh, let's make sure we put banana right here. And when this runs, it's going to do the same thing because I basically, once I get in that second variable, you can choose it to be any name you want. And it does the exact same thing. So you want to make that point real quick here. Well, this is not the only type of array that we have. We actually have different other types of array. We have associative arrays that you learned about in lesson one. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at an associative array. So in this example, I have an associative array. You can imagine that I have a store inventory, for example, and I have a doll that costs two hundred dollars, a cat that costs a hundred dollars, and training is free. So these are different. See, our key here is doll. The value is 200. The key here is cat. The value is 100. And the key here is training, and the value is free. And so, kind of some mixed up things here in the list. That's the way associative array works. And what I'm going to do here is just a little bit of a different convention. And once again, I have to put my array at the first part of my for each loop. I had as key, and then I'm going to do that uh, equal greater than sign value. And what that's going to do is allow me to print out a key value pair. This is a nice convention. Once again, you could use any name you want here. I could call that anything I wanted to, but the thing that cannot change is the array name. And so PHP knows from its programming structure to go ahead and take that value that you're going to print out called key, which comes from here, and that's the key of your array. And then value, that's the value that it prints out. So we're going to have a little thing here that's going to give me my key. I'm going to concatenate that with a dollar sign and give you its value. So it's going to run the program. And there you go, doll 200, cat 100, and training is free. So you can see a, a kind of the, how powerful this for each statement is for basically iterating over a race. Now let's actually use a, do a practical example. Let's comment this out and go to the next example. So this is a really interesting example, and I pulled this from IBM's 30 uh, game tips. And what I'm going to do is take two arrays. One is a suits array, space, hearts, clubs, and diamonds. And the other is a face array, all the faces that you can have on a deck of cards two through ace. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a for each on both of these arrays and create an entire deck of cards. So let's go ahead and take a look at that statement right here. That's next. So I'm going to do a for each on the suits and a for each on the faces. And I'm going to stick those into a deck array. Now look, I don't have to iterate. I don't even have to put an iteration number in here like you have to do in lots of other languages. PHP knows right away that you're iterating and it's going to produce that for you. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to declare basically a face key name for the face that comes from the first face array. And then a suit key name for the suit that comes from the suit array. And as I iterate over there, that's a double array and it will populate my deck of cards for me. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to come along here and comment out the bottom part of this code. We're going to actually shelf the deck and pull out a card. Go ahead and just comment this out. And what I want to do is go ahead and just echo this array so we can see indeed that we've got a deck of cards. So let's go ahead and print this uh, array out to the screen so we can see that indeed we've got a deck of cards. So print R that array. And we'll just put in deck. And let's run the program. And when you see, we indeed did get an entire deck of cards. And it says uh, with the face uh, iteration name and the suit iteration name, we got a two of spades. And here we got a three of spades and so on. We got an entire 52 deck. So that's great for that. Let's go back to our for each loop lesson. And what I want to do now is I actually want to shuffle the deck of cards. Okay, We're going to shuffle that deck. 
And then what I want to do, I want to pull a card out of the deck. So there's two ways to do that. I could pop a card off the back of the deck or shift a card off the front of the deck. I need to shift or pop a card off because I don't want that card to come back in the next shuffle. So actually, I'm going to deal out five cards. I want them all to be different. If I don't pop or shift the card off, then I can actually get that same card back again. So that's the importance of doing that. I'll shift a card off the front of the array. And then if I wanted another card, I'd just reshuffle the deck and, and pop one off. Or I could just continue just to pop cards off. It wouldn't matter. So what I'm going to do is shift a card off the front of the deck. I could do that as I continue dealing. And let's go ahead and echo that value out. So what I'm going to do is going to echo out the card face and the card suit. So that's going to run that. And when I do that, I actually get a six of spades. Now if I was going to run the code again, I'd actually get a different card, six of clubs, run again, king of hearts. So this works fantastically. And let's go back to our 4-H loop and talk about it just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and print out the entire... Um, deck right here and what we want to note if when we print that out go ahead and run this code it's going to look a little bit messy but what I've pulled off the the shifted off the the front of the cards is the six of spades now if you go through this entire deck and you look for the six of spades it will not be there and the reason being is because you've shifted it off the deck so if when you deal another card you'll shift that off the deck and you never have the problem actually having the same card back in the deck by using the, sh the shift or pop method let's go back to our for loop for each loop I just want to show you here indeed that when I print out the new card array that I only have one card in there and it uses the index names of uh, face and shift. Let's go and run this program. And there you have it. You have the nine of hearts with the face nine. That's your key. And that's your value and the suit uh, and hearts. So the suit is your key and hearts is your value. So this worked very well. This is uh, great for in a sense shuffling cards. Let's review what we've done today. So in today's lesson, we learned about the for each loop and how it's used and how you iterate uh, over it using a basically a dummy, a dummy variable right there. And we learned how to iterate over uh, associative arrays and how powerful that was. And then using the associative array idea, we actually created a, a card dealer. So you could actually shuffle out cards and you could hand them out as you needed them. And that you popped or shift a card off the deck. Uh, so you wouldn't actually get an identical card next time you dealt one. So it works real well as a card dealer. And we're going to continue with this next time and show you how to create passwords. So thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively.